for the full year of 2025. New energy vehicle sales, plug-in hybrids, e-revs, and EVs hit 12.8 million. 12.8 million. Now consider that the entire global car market is around 80 million or just a bit less than that. You can see just in China alone, a huge percentage of cars were new energy vehicles. Now that's growth, guys, of 17.6% year over year. However, how many of those were actually electric? Well, EV sales hit 8 million in 2025, 7.9 million to be exact. That's, a, that's an increase of 24.5%. So EV sales increased by, let's round that up, to 25% in China. What about plug-in hybrids? Well, their sales increased by 8.8%. 8.8%, so 9% versus 25%. Uh, you can see here that EV sales are rising much faster than plug-in hybrids. E-Rev sales increased by 6%. In the last two months of 2025, around 60% of all cars sold were either EVs or hybrids, as in cars you can actually plug in and run on the battery power alone, not Toyota-style hybrids. But if you actually have a look at which brands are selling those cars, you'll see that legacy automakers are selling very few of them. In fact, as a percentage of their sales, e-revs, plug-in hybrids and EVs, were less than 10% of the sales from legacy car manufacturers. Whereas Chinese manufacturers, 80% of their sales were new energy vehicles, predominantly EVs. Most of them were EVs. 80%. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to have you with us. If you haven't already, please click on the link in the description to become a, a YouTube member because that helps me to keep this channel going. Now, let's have a look at what has happened in China uh, this year. I've basically summarized it for you, but there are some other interesting trends going on here. EV sales in China. In fact, EV sales in China were higher than last year, every month of the year. So every single month of 2025, there were more EVs sold in China than there were the previous year. And if you look at the last four months of the year, uh, around 800,000 EVs were sold every single month, fully electric cars, not hybrids of any type, just fully electric, 800,000 per month. If you look at plug-in hybrid sales, you'll see that even though they're not a lot different to last year or to the previous year to 2024, plug-in hybrid sales actually fell for the last six months in a row in China. Not by a lot, but they fell every single month for six months in a row. What about e-revs? E-revs, well, they had the same situation, in fact. In f but a little different to plug-in hybrids because they fell for six months in a row, but then in December, they had a record month. So a phenomenal month for e-revs in December. But that said, only 100 and just under 150,000 e-revs were sold, which is a pretty small number in comparison to the 800,000 electric cars that were sold. So, of new energy vehicles in China, approximately 60% of those are fully electric, about 30% plug-in hybrids and about 10% e-revs. But if plug-in hybrid and e-rev sales are only going up by about 8% and, or 9%, I should say, are only going up by about 8% and EV sales are increasing by an average of 25%, you can clearly see the way the market's heading. And the other thing here that's probably really interesting, and to me it is in particular, it shows the uh, extreme crisis situation of companies like Porsche. Porsche is in big trouble in China. Big trouble. They've just shut down every one of their supercharger stations. Porsche dealerships are closing. Many of them. 30% of the dealerships have closed over the last 12 months. Nissan, they're in a lot of... Ford, General Motors, all these car companies are in a crisis situation in China where in the past they're making billions of dollars and all of a sudden... They're not. They're having to make write-downs on factories that are no longer being used. And it's their own fault. Honestly, they are as dumb as rocks, these legacy car companies. 
And you might have a brand, you might have a car from one of these brands, so therefore you, you like them and you have an affiliation for them. So that that will cloud your judgment. I'm sorry, but it will. It just simply will. But they are, when I say they're as dumb as rocks, I mean, if you don't agree with me, let the statistics speak for themselves. Car News China, right, says that of domestic Chinese brands, 73% of the car sales in December were new energy vehicles. But for the entire year, it was about 80%. 80%, right? So they're, they're trying to sell the cars people actually want and the, the cars that people are moving towards. Right, luxury car brands were 42.5%. Not really that interesting, really. The fact here is, though, if you compare the Chinese domestic brands to these legacy automakers, all these Western brands, all right, joint venture brands accounted for 7.2%. Only 7%, right? Only 7% of their sales were e-revs and hybrids, plug-in hybrids and electric cars. Seven, so 92, 92.8% of their car sales were purely internal combustion. That market's going to be dead within a few years. This is where legacy automakers have made billions of dollars. In fact, many of them, 50% or more of their profit has historically in the last decade come from China. Volkswagen Group, BMW. Uh, this is an, 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 a crisis that I don't think anyone has any idea how bad this actually is. They're going to be walking away from billions and billions of dollars of investment. And they already are. I mean, look, look at uh, Hyundai selling their factory for that they cost them $1.25 billion to build. And a few years later, they sell it for $280 million. That's a loss of a billion dollars in a couple of years. That's just one example of many. Many of these factories won't even be able to be sold. They'll just be, you know, uh, they'll just basically walk away from them, declare bankruptcy, like what Mitsubishi did. Uh, like what Jeep did, I should say. But Mitsubishi just walked up and left as well. Just got up and took off. Now, if you look at actual retail sales, just the retail sales, those figures are even worse. 81% of all new energy vehicle of all cars sold by Chinese automakers in China, 81% were new energy vehicles. For legacy manufacturers, the number was 8%. But here's why that number is far worse than it sounds. Well, legacy automakers, that includes Tesla. And Tesla sells only electric cars. Now, if you remove Tesla from these numbers, that 8.2% is probably going to end up being about 7.5%. Maybe even less than I don't know exactly how the numbers work there, but it's definitely less than 8%. So clearly, these legacy manufacturers, their days in China are numbered. And the takeaway, I guess, should be that it's their own decision that has led to their own their demise. They weren't interested in EVs until the last, what, maybe 24 months? And by then, they were so far behind that all they could do is what Toyota is doing, what Nissan's doing, what Mazda's doing. Just get contract manufacturers, just rebadge other brands' cars, rebadge the same model. And I think Chinese consumers, you know, a lot of them do know this, a lot of them don't, to be honest, but a lot of them do know that that's what's happening. And they probably have to think to themselves, why am I buying a rebadged car? It's kind of an embarrassment. I mean, why not just buy the actual car itself from the manufacturer itself? Maybe that car might even be better. I mean, to be honest, if I'm that contract manufacturer, if I'm, you know, if I'm making it cars for Mazda or Toyota or another car brand, they're Japanese. I mean, you know, you know what the Chinese think about Japanese people? There's, yeah, there's a, there's a bit of a history there, as you know. So I probably would be putting in a few software bugs into those cars. <laughs> I'd be, you know, here's what's been said by a number of car manufacturers, including the CEO of BYD. They want to get rid, they want to rid China of legacy automakers. That's their goal, their aim. And I'm pretty confident based on these numbers, that's exactly what's happening. Not only is it what's happening, but clearly the future of the Western the Western Auto industry is under threat because 32 million cars are sold in China every year, right? That's that's about 36% of the entire global car market. But it's not just 32 million. It's all the cars they're exporting. Millions of cars they're exporting. So China is actually about 50%, if you include the exports as well, of the entire global car market. And if legacy automakers lose China, 
they're only playing in 50% of the entire market. That's a big problem. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Guys, if you want to install solar panels, a home battery, or a home charger, the best way to do this for your situation is to go to the links in the description below and they'll take you to a page where you can compare everyone. So depending on where you, it doesn't matter where you live, a lot of people email me all the time saying, well, what solar system should I get? Who should I go with? What battery should I get? What electric charger should I get? Well, click in the links in the description and you can actually compare all the different choices and find the best deal for you. I'll put that link in the description below. Additionally, there is a battery savings calculator link and also a federal battery rebate calculator. I personally have found that I'm not paying for electricity at all, and that's including charging my two electric cars and also running my home power, my home sauna, um, nothing not paying anything at all. And I think a lot of people are getting misled. They think that getting a battery is not worth it. Actually, I think it is worth it. So those links are in the description below.